everybody, Emma here from the Golden Potato, and welcome to another awesome mod review where today we're going to be taking a look at my very own mod! It should be amazing. I don't know why I sang that last note. I think I was too taken by the awesomeness of it all that I just I just had to burst it out into song. But anyway, we're going to be uh, reviewing this mod today, and I'm going to be showing you the crafting recipes and all the little things you probably didn't know if you had just downloaded it and started playing it yourself. But of course, I am accompanied by Frank. What would a mod review be? Especially one about golden potatoes. Without Frank, how are you doing, buddy? So you might notice a few strange things offhand, but I will make sure to cover those. And to show you the crafting recipe so that you can go and incorporate this mod into your survival mode as well. I'm using not enough items. Uh, this mod right here, you might you might recognize this from somewhere. Probably a lot of other modded survivals use it. Just like, um, I don't know, my crazy craft series. <laughs> and uh, that will be how I show you the crafting recipe. So without further ado, let's get into the golden potato mod. Mod, mod, mod. That's an echo because it's, it's so epic. I don't know. Get pumped. I'm pumped. Anyway. The basis of all of your crafting recipes are probably going to go uh, and surround these four items. Uh, so we have our golden potato ore, which as you can see is pretty abundant in this special biome. But it is also in between the rarity of diamond and gold and you have to find it below block level 32 if you're mining on an ordinary day in any cave in any biome. It'll be pretty low above the ground, or below the ground I should say, but you will need to find this magical ore. Now obviously smelting it will get you one of these. This is a golden potato ingot. So you get one potato ingot. For every time you smelt a golden potato ore, and they are pretty rare, the ore that is. Um, but as you can see, the ore itself is uh, very nice and filled with potatoes. They're like potato chunks inside. Um, they are pretty rare unless you find one of these biomes here, which have an abundance. They're always below the surface, as you can see. Always below the surface. And they're also extremely durable, but you will need a diamond, diamond pickaxe to mine them. But they are pretty durable, almost as durable as obsidian, if not more. So smelting those will give you golden potato ingots. Now you're going to need these to craft oh, the golden potato. <laughs> I had to sing again, I'm sorry, but to craft this you're going to need eight golden potato ingots to surround a single potato, which you can get. And this is, these are regular potatoes you can get from villages and start your own farms. And the golden potatoes are quite expensive considering the rarity of the golden potato ingots if you can't find this biome here but that is because most of the stuff in this mod is a very powerful if not better than diamond so you just might have to look really hard because it'll totally be worth it and then you can take things a step forward by making reinforced golden potatoes which have like an iron barring around them and that's going to take one golden potato but then an additional four iron ingots in the middle sections here and gold and gets four of those in the corners so those are going to be the basis of your crafting recipes for most things so the first thing we'll probably take a look at are these awesome things right here these are tools and weapons so we have the standard golden potato sword um this is plus 20 because it takes two golden potatoes and a stick and it's very very powerful so let's just take this for a minute if i wanted to slay this dirt potato beast one hit would kill him and did i mention that the sword spawns lightning no i did not but now you will find out um anytime it hits an entity um let me just set the time today it will basically light it on fire so this will turn pigs into zombie pigmen and this will turn creepers into supercharged creepers but it'll also allow things to drop cooked meat and you'll look absolutely epic because the sword itself is very broad and has like cool spiky bits on the end i designed everything uh as well and then we have the golden potato pickaxe which also does plus 18 damage but it's very swift to make work of even the most durable ores so let's go grab some obsidian see how quickly it mines some obsidian shall we now let's go into game mode zero and see how quickly it mines this ore right here. Very makes very quick work of the ore. And as for the obsidian, it takes wow, making quick work of that obsidian right there. And yes, there are achievements that I have created as well that we can go over very soon. But as you can see, making quick, quick work of obsidian. Wow, that's amazing. And it, it'll mine stone like uh, regular pickaxes, but totally worth it. And to craft that, you're going to need the standard pickaxe recipe, but with golden potatoes at the top instead. Now we move on to the, some of the fun ones. I probably should grab myself some test dummy pigs for this. Let's grab ourselves some pigs. But we have four specialty weapons. We have the potato staff of the wind, which does do a little amount of damage. But to craft that, you are going to need, let's see, two sticks and a potato on the end on a diagonal like this. And this doesn't do much damage because that's when you hit a mob. It'll be flown up into the air and the majority of the damage it takes will be from falling so you can just whisk everything away up and away and it'll all fly into the air and fall and rain beautiful beautiful pork chop so that is the staff of the wind potato we obviously and a little bit of potato tip on the end there 
But uh, it, it will do its best to lift things up in the air and you can watch them come crashing down. Fun stuff, right? A little morbid. <laughs> we'll put the remains of the pork chops away. We also have the fiery potato blade, which uh, as you may guess, light things on fire. <laughs> to craft this, you're going to need a stick and three golden potatoes. They're also gonna need a flint and steel. So that gives it its fiery aspect. So look, it just lights things on fire. It does do um, the same thing as a stone sword, plus five attack damage, but now your mods will drop cooked goodies instead of uh, raw ones, which I think is pretty darn awesome. And there are flames spewing out of the hot potato core center thing. Unless we have the ultimate sword of potato, which looks quite intimidating. It costs uh, a lot of golden potatoes, reinforced golden potatoes that is, surrounding a regular golden potato sword. But it is all worth the expenses because it does a plus 24 damage. It doesn't have any special effects. It's just straight up really, really aggressive. <laughs> so that is that. Okay, so where were we? Just wrapping up the Ultra Sword of Potato. Like I said, once again, very standard sword, but super powerful. And also, as you can see, really, really expensive. You're going to need a lot of resources to build this, but it won't have the lightning effect. So it's totally, totally worth it. And lastly, we have the Potato of Boom Boom, which is an animated texture of, if you can see, a potato with TNT wrapped around it exploding. And to craft this, you're going to need five TNT dispersed in the corners and in the middle sections, four golden potatoes. And that will give you 16 potatoes of Boom Boom. And these are explosive projectiles. So you simply right click to throw them and it will explode. Now, as you can see, I can't explode this lower layer of blocks here, these uh, golden potato ores, because they are as durable as obsidian, but I can explode this tree in two or three hits. It's not terribly overpowered, but we can wipe out this whole flock of uh, special mobs here. And they are a little expensive, but I think it's it's pretty well balanced that you get 16 of these, especially considering the fact that they, um, they can throw very, very far. Let's see how far we can throw them. Can we throw them... Let's see how far we hit. Uh, away. So if you aim these properly, they can be a really, really great weapon. Uh, the next thing we have are two sets of armor. We have standard golden potato armor and reinforced. So the golden potato armor is just the traditional armor recipes with um, your golden potatoes. So let's put this on and see what it does. Um, it actually, when we go into game mode zero, will give you full protection, even stronger than diamond, but it also comes with an added bonus. Uh, if you craft any piece of this armor in survival mode, it will actually come pre-enchanted with Feather Falling 5. So any of the pieces of standard golden potato armor, if you don't shift click, and if you craft them in survival mode, will come with Feather Falling 5. Because regular potatoes are quite squishy, so then you can take this off and wear all of your enchanted goodiness, which will protect you from falling. So if we go from here right now, and I'm going to take a risk here, if we go into game mode 0 and we fall... We only take two hearts of damage. Very, very impressive. And as you can see, all ten shield GYs are filled up. And then the same goes for the reinforced golden potato um, outfits. If you do craft them, you also get a pre-enchanted ability. So this is what it looks like on you. Very, very nice. Looks like a little potato -y texture, but with some iron mesh around it. Because these are reinforced potatoes after all. Um, but if you craft them, they will also come pre-enchanted so let's see what that enchantment is if we craft the pants oh look they come with protection five because these are reinforced potatoes and they are extra super duper protective um they will come with not feather falling five because these are um harder stronger potatoes but just straight up protection five and as you can see i shift clicked there um and that shortcut won't allow the enchantment to activate you actually have to click on it and drag it into your inventory for the enchantment to happen. So that is the reinforced golden potato armor, both of which are very, very strongly reinforced. Obviously, is a lot stronger considering that it has the maximum protection enchantment uh, available. I thought protection time would be a little overpowered, but nonetheless, there you have it. And we also have some additional blocks. We have the solid golden potato blocks, which, as you can see, make up this biome. And we also have charred golden potato blocks. Now, if I'm correct, uh, this won't do anything when you put it through the crafting table. But if you put charred golden potato blocks through the crafting table, let's get rid of that for a minute, you will actually get uh, stale potato chips. Now, these... They give you three steel potato chips, but these are a really poor source of food. I mean, obviously, you can get a lot of them, considering that they're abundant in that biome that we'll venture into later in this mod review. But, um, they have low saturation, they don't, they don't fill your food points, but there are a lot of stale chip opportunities available to eat these. So, they're a good snack if you need something. And we also have two more pieces of food. 
the golden french fries and the golden potato burger. So I'm going to go into game mode zero. Um, all foods for the golden potato mod are 100% edible no matter how hungry you are. So the golden potato burger um, won't give you anything, but it will fill five whole um, hunger icons right here. Um, they are quite expensive to craft. I <laughs> forgot to show you there, but essentially you would need... Um, three bread across the top, three bread across the bottom, and three golden potatoes in the middle, like a burger. Um, and that will give you the potato burger, which heals a lot of hunger. And then we also have the french fries, which just require three golden potatoes in a column anywhere, and they'll give you three golden french fries. And these actually give you a special boost. They will give you intense speed for a solid 15 seconds, so you can run around and do whatever you want with your burst of french fries. And since you can eat them when you're not hungry, when you're even when you're full, you can eat them. It's a really, really great source of food. I also forgot to mention that the stale potato chips do have a chance, a 20% chance of giving you poison. Um, but that's because they are so abundant. Anyway, that is that. I don't want to do the poison test now, but you'll get my point. And lastly, we have the biomes and the mobs. So we have four mobs in total. Uh, okay, so let's take a look. First is the golden derp potato be derp potato beast. This is the cow that we've all come to know. Let me grab this sword here. This is the derp potato beast. It's quite derpy. Most of these mobs are tameable with golden potatoes, so you can breed these and make little baby ones if you wanted to, which would be absolutely adorable. But killing them, they have a chance of dropping regular potatoes and also a one to two stale potato chips. So let's see if he'll drop anything else. Same drops, obviously, another potato, another stale potato chips, and all that jazz. So these guys are passive. They will spawn in this biome and a few other forest ones, but they will spawn in the largest groups in this biome right here. The next we have is the floating potato monster. This one's a little dangerous. There it is. It's a potato ghast. Now, it will shoot fireballs, but it won't have as large a radius as um, the ones in the nether. And when they drop, they'll actually drop some pretty valuable things sometimes, which is why they can be so dangerous. They spawn mainly in the two potato biomes, although you can find them um, in other biomes as well. They drop these bad boys. They dropped reinforced golden potatoes, which are quite expensive to craft, which is why if you want to take on one of these, it might be worth it because they drop like one to three reinforced golden potatoes every time, which as we remember can be quite, quite expensive. So there you have the floating uh, potato monster. It floats, it will fire at you. It's quite aggressive. They spawn in groups of two to four, mainly in this biome, um, especially because of all the valuable golden potato materials. You're going to need a bad guy. But that is that. And then we also have the golden potato creeper, which is like a standard creeper, except it will burn in the daylight and it will shoot arrows at you. So I'm not going to show that. Obviously, killing it will just drop standard potatoes. They're pretty abundant and they act like skeletons, but they are a little bit faster. Maybe if it turns to nighttime, I can show you again the golden potato creeper. As you can see, it is um, a creeper, but with a goldeny potato -y texture. And they'll drop potatoes, and also, because they do shoot arrows at you instead of explode, they will drop bows and arrows like uh, typical skeletons. And last but not least, we have the Sir Derpington of Potatoton, which is my, my favorite mob. Here it is right here. This guy is derpy, <laughs> and he is tameable with golden potatoes. And then you can tame him, and he will follow you around. Now, they are quite fast, and they will spawn here. Um, potato beasts are obviously the most abundant. They're a great source of food. And also potatoes, if you can't find any villages nearby, if you want to craft your golden potatoes. But, uh, let's grab ourselves some extra golden potatoes. I believe they were in here. Yeah, and let's just crank the music down a little bit, because that can be a little bit annoying. And if we go over here, we can tame this guy. So let's tame him with our golden potatoes. He is tamed to us now, and he will follow us. So let's create a little army, shall we? Some more derbingtons of potato tins. Let's tame them. They tame like wolves, and then they will follow you around. So I think these guys, one of these guys is going to follow me right now. The other two are sitting. They don't have different mm. textures, but if we just right-click them once, they should both be off following me, and they will um, help me. That, that one doesn't know what he's doing, but these two will follow me, and they'll teleport. Up oh, there they are, and when I get hurt, they will actually begin to attack. So if I spawn a creeper, it won't burn, and then if I go into mm. game mode zero... It'll try to shoot me. Help me. Oh no, I'm getting attacked. Well, guess what? My good guys will come in to help me. And they will help me destroy the, the potato guy. And they do a lot of damage too. They're actually pretty powerful. Um, they don't have separate animation textures for sitting. But uh, I think it's totally worth it. And as you can see, the potato the potato creeper shot his arrows at me. But my derpingtons came to the rescue because I tamed them. Quite an expensive tameable thing. You can't... Uh, you can't breed these guys, like the derp, derp potato beasts, but you can get little baby derp potato beasts. Let me see if we can get them to breed here. Let's just tame them. Um, tame, 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 tame. 
Uh, you're not tamed for me, are you? Is it with regular potatoes, maybe? Maybe you guys tamed with regular potatoes. No. Uh, they're not taming for me right now. We'll work that out later. But the last thing is the biomes. So the very first biome we have here is, if you look up right here, um, the second to last line on the left of, of like, Cody information and stuff, it says the Golden Potato Lands. That is the name of this biome. Um, uh, very flat. This is actually a fairly small one. Um, but it comes with these potato blocks on top. Solid golden potato blocks. Um, pretty decorative. They just act like dirt. They're kind of like a dirt material. You can just mine it with your hands. And the filler layer are these abundant, abundant, uh, golden potato ore blocks. Which can be quite rare to find unless you strike this biome. And the other one over here we haven't gone into yet. But this is the spooky... Uh, potato forest, I think that's what it's called. It is called the Spooky Potato Forests. Very tall spruce trees, great for building. Villagers will also spawn here, as you can see, and occasionally an iron golem. But also because it's darker, it's naturally going to be more hostile, and it's a bit more hilly. Um, the top block is grass, and it's actually a pretty rainy, fertile area. But the filler block is this dark, charred golden potato here, which will also be a great source of those stale potato chips. But as you can see, oh no, there's a baby zombie going after the villager! Run! Anyway, it can be quite a dangerous place, especially because there's so much shade even in the daylight. But if we are to go above the trees here, you can see that it would be great for building tree forts, since the tallest trees go up to 80 or 90 blocks tall. Very thick canopy, very dense uh, amount of trees per chunk. I think this is the tallest tree so far, and you can just chill here. And this is actually where we're going to end out this video, so hopefully... You learn the recipes and you learn the little intricacies of my mod. If you do have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them in the comments. And hopefully I'll have the recipes up on my Planet Minecraft entry that is at this time still waiting for approval. So you can always check back to that forum page or this mod review if you want to check out the crafting recipes or learn any more about the mod and stuff. And also keep in mind that I am doing... Oh, ha what what are you doing? <laughs> he just fell. Oh, there you guys are. Let's, uh, let's get you to sit there. Anyway, um, I'm also making another version of this mod with fan additions, recommendations based on you guys. Now, I can't do anything too advanced yet, but if you want to see a character of your own creation added into this mod, or perhaps you um, want to see... Hmm, what else might you want to see? I don't know. Any idea of yours in this mod. I'll be also creating a separate edition of this mod with all of the core items that we see in this creative tab right here, but with the addition of your guys' ideas. Um, I have one person who's given me their idea so far that I've been able to implement. Some things might be a little complicated, but I do try my best to make sure that your dreams can appear in this very mod, and then you can go and download it and play it yourself. So, currently, we have about 20 downloads of this mod, which is pretty darn awesome, and I'm waiting to hear back on how my mod trailer did in the Youth Digital Summer Blockbuster competition. You can also check out the trailer if you haven't already. It's, it's a pretty recent video, but... On that note, and those public service announcements, I'd like to end this video here. So thank you so much for watching. If you happen to enjoy this video, then please leave a big fat thumbs up. And also, if you are new to my channel, then please consider subscribing to The Golden Potato today for frequent Minecraft videos. If you do have any suggestions, questions about this mod, or comments for additions uh, to the fan version, then please leave them in the comment section below. And it's been Emma and Frank, who I sadly abandoned back in the potato lands back there. But uh, it's been Emma and Frank from The Golden Potato, and of course, Sir Derpington. And I will see you. All next time, goodbye! <laughs>